This is Stan Houston of the What It Takes Radio Company. And uh, a number of years ago, I did a presentation called uh, The Intentional Leader. And uh, a young man just recently saw it and said, that was really good. You ought to show it again. I really enjoyed it. And so I'm going to do that as a little bit of my legacy. I gave the presentation in four parts, and here we go. This was part one, and I had just been introduced by the uh, host, and then uh, the following happened. Thank you. That's your first lesson. Who cares? Who cares? First rule of success, forget what is behind. So what? Forget what is behind. Press toward the mark. All of that was very, very nice. And unfortunately, most of you spend your time in your marketing talking about who you are, how good you are, what you did, and I'm supposed to care. Well, there it is. It's on the floor because that's where it belongs. Right now, we have today. And by God's grace, we may have tomorrow. But this is all we have today. And you're going to be here for about three hours. Now, we have to make that worthwhile because when we're done, you're all going to be three hours closer to being dead. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, every human interaction you have with people is the same way. All of them are dying. And uh, when they spend time with you, they are either better off or they are worse off. There is no neutrality in the universe. You either bless or you curse. Either somebody is better off because you were in connection and relationship with them, or they're not. And so you have a decision every time to decide whether you are going to try to bless or curse. I got an email yesterday. Somebody didn't particularly like one of the blog posts I had because he didn't understand it. Instead of asking me what it meant, he unsubscribed. I know from the organization that is, quote, Christian. He cursed me. Didn't he? He made my day a little bit more miserable. He hurt me. Didn't have to. But he decided to do that. He could have simply said, Stan, I don't understand that. Could you explain it? But no, it's not for him. So. Please leave, is what he said to me. Have you ever cursed anybody? Yeah, you sure have. <laughs> All the time we do it if we're not intentional about every person you meet. So, two lessons I hope we've learned right off the bat. First of all, press toward the mark. Forget what is behind. What you did in the past is in the past. And then as we are moving forward into people's lives and into their businesses, we are always asking what question? Am I going to bless them or am I going to curse them? And you would like to believe, well, we'll keep it neutral. <laughs> there is no neutrality. Yeah. The receptionist, the guy at the car wash, the person doing my groceries, they are either better off 
where they are worse off because Stan Houston came into their life that moment. Is that true? Okay. Now, is that going to change the way we do our days? We really believe that? Now, as I used to say in radio and still say, just let that sit on your head for a while. Now, in my case now, it falls off, but you know, <laughs> that's part of the story. Okay. Um, let me tell you a story. It's a little over 20 years ago, after all that stuff I did. Kind of impressive, you think, right? That's why we write a resume, to try and impress people. Tell them how good we are. Okay, there it is. That's what your resume is all about. I just did a video show called Throw Away Your Resume. Okay, there it is. There's my resume. Okay, that's what. But there I was. And it was a cold, miserable day in Minnesota. And I'd had a hard day. I was looking for work. After all that stuff. And my wife came back from work. She had a job. And so we put together our dinner. And then afterwards, I got up and went to my desk to get ready for the next day. And my dear wife, Karen, all of a sudden, takes the dish towel. Says, this is exactly what I was hoping for when I married you 20 years ago. I was hoping that after 20 years of marriage, we would have no house, no car, no job, no money, Broke and a kid in college. That's exactly what I was hoping for when I married you 20 years ago. And then she used a word she didn't learn in Baptist Sunday school to describe me. I was 45 years of age, and all of that was true. That's my story. And I discovered that I had never taken time to find out what true success might require. I'm still trying to find that out, though I'm a little bit better at it. The point was, I had to learn what success was all about. Now, what you're going to find today is that is my story because what I do always flows out of my story. As you noticed, most of you, I did not ask you what you do. I said, what's your story? And you know what you did? You chose the most important thing. To tell me. Never ask people what they do. That's not important. Ask them, what's your story? If you meet a business owner, what does that business owner want to talk about? His business! <laughs> Doesn't he? Well, why don't we remember that? Okay, now, that's part of my story. And for you to understand where I'm going, you have to understand my story. And if we're going to build a relationship it has to be on the basis of exchanging stories because nothing happens until our stories meet. Nothing happens until our stories meet. So, that's what you have to understand about me. I then had to discover what success was all about. And what you're going to get is some of the things that I have learned about success and marketing. By the way, I have never taken, I've written many things on marketing, I have never taken one college class in marketing. Because first of all, if you take marketing in college, they'll teach you how not to do it. <laughs> yeah. 
don't listen to them. They don't know what they're talking about. In fact, most of the things they teach you in college don't listen to anyone. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's what I want you to understand, that this comes out of an understanding of as a missionary and as a broadcaster and as a teacher and hopefully a mentor, but most importantly, a friend. Because we want a relationship. That is the goal. The goal is not the sale. By the way, the goal of all communication is relationship. It is not information. Amazon believes data is everything. So it's okay to beat up on all their people. Because they're just simply sources of data. By the way, it's very, very powerful stuff. We're here to establish relationships. We got that now? Okay, now, you have one minute to tell your story. Got to go into my stuff here, all right? Where I keep all my stuff. By the way, as you will see, I never use PowerPoint. Because if you use PowerPoint, you give away your power. This changed the world. This changed the world. And if you don't understand that, you're not ready to do business. Now, if you are of my age and stage, many, many years ago, this was the broadcast philosophy. You know what it was? Very simply, if you were smart, you got the right guy, and always was a guy, and a white guy, who would give the news. And so people would turn on the TV, and they would hear the 6.30 news, or 5.30 news. That's where you got the news. Then that person would actually, hopefully, send you, because you're sitting there in the couch, the next show at 7 o'clock would be a situation comedy. And say, oh! And you keep doing that until 10 o'clock when you do the local news. And if you did it right, they would sit there on their butt from 7, 6.30 to 10.30 and never change the channel. Because to change the channel meant they had to actually get up <laughs> out of the couch and go and turn the switch. And then go back and say, oh, I don't like that show. And they had to get up and do it again. This changed the world. Totally. You call it a remote control. It's a message selector. I can now decide the messages that come into my life. And if I don't like the message, I click and I switch. That means if I don't like your message, I can go choose the message I want. And there are not three or four channels anymore. There are 200,000 of them. This changed the world. You understand that now? I don't have to listen to you anymore. Now, as a result of that, this is why I'm going to teach you the very first thing you have to know. You have one minute to tell your story. And here's the way I'm going to illustrate this to you. You have won, Diana. You know what you've won, Diana? Uh, a lawyer called you from California, and he said, Diana, I've got some bad news and some good news. Well, what's the bad news? Diana, your Uncle Joe passed away. Uncle Joe? What happened? Well, you gotta know, Uncle Joe was her mother's youngest brother, and he was always strange. 
and he went to California, and he was in L.A., and of course the people back in South Dakota and Minnesota and Iowa wondered what he was up to. And all we know that he began to make some money, he began to drive a Buick even. <laughs> and it turns out he had a lot of money, but we never knew what he did. He didn't have any children, never got married. Well, because you're kind of an entrepreneur, you were always kind to him. And you liked him. And sometimes you'd even go to California, you'd meet him, and he'd take you to his favorite restaurant, where obviously he was one of the regulars. And you were kind to him. And everybody else was kind of, you know, thought he was strange. Well, he was strange. <laughs> so, well, Uncle Joe, when did he die? Well, four months ago. Four months ago? Well, Diana, we didn't even know he had any family. And when he died, his little company, we, we didn't know what to do. We didn't know where he was. So we finally a little service, and we buried him. And, and, and then we finally got into his safety deposit box. And I'd always been telling him he had to put a will together, but he always said he wasn't going to do that. And so we finally broke into the safety deposit box. And he has written out a little, on a little yellow piece of paper, he wrote out a will. Diane, you're the sole heir. Uh, the re he was in the environment. He was in, he was in the junkyard business, which eventually became environmental recycling. He made millions. Diane says, "Hooray! <laughs> now I can live the way I want to live. I can tell my boss that I'm leaving. I'm in good shape." And the lawyer said, well, there's kind of a strange thing about this will. He said, Diana had always told me that if she could just get in front of enough people and tell her story and show them what she could do, she could be a smashing success. If you could just do that. But you know, it's really hard to get in front of people and they all have their click and switchers, you know, and they're very busy and it's really hard to get in front of people and tell your story. He said, I'm calling Diana's bluff. I have just bought Diana three 60 second commercials on Super Bowl Sunday. On the NCAA Final Four, uh, Diana has $20 million to spend on advertising. Diana, you can tell 100 million people your story. You have one minute. Now, unless you are ready to do the Super Bowl commercial, you are not ready to market in today's world. You got that? Unless you can do a Super Bowl commercial, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, you're not ready. Can you do that? Could you do it tomorrow? Well, I'm going to teach you how to start, okay? All right, a little formula. Now, it's kind of original with me because I just changed it a bit, you know. Whatever you can change something, you can call it original. <laughs> I see. All right. <clears throat> I write for I write copy all the time. I am really good at writing commercials. Because in broadcasting school, the broadcast guy said to me, he said, he said, Stan, you think you're here because you think you're cute. And you're hoping that the chicks <laughs> will come after you because you're on the radio. And he said, let me tell you the secret of radio. The purpose of radio is not for you to entertain people. The purpose of radio is for the radio station owner to make money. <laughs> and the only way he makes money is when people listen to you on the radio, and then you sell them, to, and they come in and buy, and the guy at the grill says, hey, so-and-so came in because they heard Stan Houston say so, and he goes, and he sells more advertising. That's why you're here. You are not here to be cute, wonderful, happy, celebrity. You are here to help the radio station owner make money. <laughs> and 
And so if you can't do that, it doesn't matter how cute, wonderful, and beautiful you are, unless you can do that. So he said, you're going to spend 14 weeks writing commercials. By the way, I want you, if you want to be successful, you have to learn the art of writing a radio and TV commercial. I'm sorry, but you have to. This is dead tree marketing. It's a dead tree. That's all it is. It could be a glossy dead tree. It could be a pretty dead tree. It could be a half, but it's a dead tree. Now you're going to remember that, okay? Because that's important. Now, what is true is that in a 60 second commercial, you have seven seconds to get their attention. You have seven seconds to get their attention. But guess what happens if you don't get their attention? They click! <laughs> they click! Then, you have to keep them interested. See, as they taught me at the BBC, they're doing something else. Stop them. Nobody is waiting to hear your commercial or hear your story. No businessman or businesswoman is waiting for you to walk in the door and say, I'd like 20 minutes of your time to tell you how wonderful I am. Nobody in Tucson is doing that. Or in the whole world. Okay, then, now you got how much time for you all this? 60 seconds. Then you have to paint a picture of something where I say, oh, that would be nice. That would be nice. I'd like that. You actually have, now that's the core to it. Mmm. Yeah. Now, now start watching all the commercials. The good ones get your attention. We're not to shock, but okay. Mm, I didn't know that. I didn't know. Well, I've never heard that before. That's interesting. It's new. Oh, that would be nice. I'd like that. Then. You have to help them decision. I have to help them make a decision. You can have this. You can enjoy this. Rick, you're a chiropractor. Last thing I want to do is go to a chiropractor. but I sure hated it when my arm was so sore and I couldn't move it. Please keep in mind, whatever you're selling, they don't want it. <laughs> you are asking everybody to commit an unnatural act. Did you know that? You are asking them to take out their wallet, open it up, and give you money. I got news for you. They would prefer not to. <laughs> they would prefer keeping their money. <coughs> Wouldn't they? And so you have to show me that there's something worth what? Giving, giving me money. They don't want to do that. And you're going to have to ask me to figure out how to do that. And you finally have to ask me and show me how to make a decision. Now, by the way, you see, see, how, see how tough this is getting? Because how, how much time do you have? You've got 60 seconds. By the way, what you should all do right now is go to your website and resolve within the next month, week, 
that when I open your website, I see a 60 second video. <laughs> open it up, there you are. No dead tree, no text, just boom. <laughs> You got a pain in the neck? You got a pain in the ass? I can help with one of them. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's a little bit shocking, but I got your attention, didn't I? Now, I did that deliberately because I don't want to go for the shock, but I have to come close. Don't I? Because who does Rick want? People who have what? Pain! pain! <laughs> You know, that's what it's all about in his business. It's about pain. Okay, now, then I have to help them. This is what you have to do. I'm going to give you some choices here. And then, what are we going to do? What's the last one? How can I? Dial 1-800, go to our website, come on in. We have a free gift. You know, you have to come. Now, that is the formula for everything. Every sales presentation has to follow that formula. Did you know that? Whether it's in person or on the radio or on the internet. By the way, have you noticed that I have told you nothing about me and what I do? I let him do that, and what I do? I tore it up, so don't start there. Do you know what the name of my company is? Who cares? <laughs> I was trained by the BBC. Who cares? Who cares? This is all about what they can feel experience, or do. Now, did you get those three? You have a message, so I feel. I'm experiencing something. I can do something. Now, my challenge to you is now you know. If you're going to be successful in business today, you have to know how to do a what? Super Bowl commercial. Everything about you has to come down because this changed the world. No, you, I will not give you 20 minutes of my valuable time to hear you talk about me. <laughs> or you. I, I will give you maybe 30 seconds, 60 seconds if you're really good, maybe 10. And as one person said, is eventually the commercial will come down to 10 seconds. That's what's happening. There you go. So the first lesson in how to be an intentional business leader is to throw away all your brochures, throw away all that other stuff, and come up with the fact that you can tell people what they can feel, experience, and do, and you can grab their attention. You can keep them interested. You can paint a picture of something desirable. You can call for decision. And then remember, trick question. Three ducks were on a log. Two decided to jump in. How many are left? Three. That's right, because they only decided. You have to act. And so my challenge to you now is based on what you've learned in the last 28 minutes and 30 seconds. What action are you going to take to make your Super Bowl commercial? Time. Thank you.